Shout out to MK for posting his comment. Definitely appreciate any and all constructive comments that you guys have. So just consider this video a companion to the first data cleaning one, where I skipped all the bad sales data examples. Turns out they're a little trickier than I made them out to be, so I'm going to be covering them in this video. I find it's more of a power query video, not so much a Excel shortcut video. I will be using Excel shortcuts, but that's not the focus here. For the downloads, refer to the Foresight BI link again in the description. Thanks again Foresight BI for posting free data cleaning examples. The first badly structured sales data challenge is what we refer to in Power Query as an unpivot. So we're just taking a wide data structure, which is universally not very useful, and turning it into a vertical structure, which is. For more on that, see my video, How to Make a Bad Spreadsheet and How to Fix One in Under 30 Seconds. This puzzle has a bit of a twist though, because they have a double decker label going on here. My first action is going to be to delete the subtotals. They don't appear in the clean version, so we're just going to get rid of them. Next, I'm going to copy the first layer of labels. So Power Query understands that both labels apply to the columns I'm copying over. Now because both labels apply to each of these columns, I'm going to do a concatenation into one header. Unpivot in Power Query only seems to be able to handle one header per column, so that'll make a little more sense when I show you in Power Query. Also notice I put the at symbol in between the two things I concatenated. That's so I can separate them better later with text to columns. So now that I've smushed together the double decker labels into one, I can go ahead and get rid of row one and two. So then I highlight my data and go to Power Query. Keyboard shortcut is Alt A P T for selecting from table range. Then you just press enter to make it a table. So now that we're in Power Query, what you're gonna do is an unpivot, and in order to do that, you're going to click on the first row. I haven't found a way to do this without the mouse. And then highlight over all the columns that are not the order ID. And then to unpivot, it's Alt T U then go down with your arrow to unpivot only selected columns. And then to close and load, it's Alt H C. Enter. So now we have our beautiful vertical layout and the labels are needing to be split up, which I like to do with text to columns in Excel using at sign as a delimiter. And because we had compound words in some of the labels, using the at sign allows us to do this easily. If we would have just put a space, it would not be easy. Now I'm going to go over to the clean example so I can compare our clean data with what we cleaned and then see if it's exactly the same. And the first thing I do is rearrange these columns so they're in the same order. It makes it easier to compare. Then I make the headers the same, again, just to keep it organized. I'm going to do a sort left to right for each of the headers. I'll do the same for both sets of data and from there I'll do my check. And to check if two records are exactly the same, I'll just type an equal sign in a blank cell, highlight one of the cells, and then another equal sign to highlight a different cell. And it will say true if both of those records are exactly the same. So to apply an auto filter, I just do control shift one finger and L. Somebody commented on one of my TikToks that that was a better way to do it than Alt DFF, and I agree. I've been doing that ever since. So now on to the second challenge for badly structured sales data it's almost exactly the same and the way to fix it is almost exactly the same as what I showed you before the double decker headers we want to copy those right then we want to concatenate them and concatenate just means to take one string and attach it to the end of the other and in order to do that you just in your formula bar you want to type an ampersand and that's how you concatenate and then if you want to put text in between it, you want to put that in quotes. So I put the at sign in quotes. So again, I'm going to highlight my data. I'm going to go to the data tab and then from table range and convert it into a table. And I don't know of a way to do this without making it a table. If you happen to know, put it in the comments. And now to unpivot, we're going to take all the columns except for the first one that has order date in it. And then we're going to go to Alt 
T U. Then hit the arrow a couple times and then hit enter. And it's Alt H C to close and load. And we go back to Excel. And folks, I know there's a way to uh, split columns and kind of do a text of columns in Power Query, but I just prefer to do mine in Excel. And really, I don't think there's a time savings. Uh, the only difference really is when you're doing transformations of the same kind of data on a regular basis. And if you're doing that, then it pays to have kind of a routine set up so you can transform things that come in wrong and go out a certain way. I'm kind of doing a one and done approach to this. And if you notice, I did this sorting purely by keyboard, which is challenging at first. I got the hang of it. So that's something I might include in an obstacle course. There's always room for improvement. And also I noticed when you have a table, it's hard to do my auditing process. So what I've done is go to uh, the table, highlight all the data, and then convert that to a range. And that can be done with the right click button, table, and convert to range. And that just means I can take my one truth formula, copy it over and down, so I don't have to rewrite it a bunch of times like you saw me do it before. Now we're on to obstacle number three, Badly Structured Sales Data 3. And there's a little hint in there that says watch out for the total. So what you want to do is before you convert it to a table is you want to exclude the totals in there because they're not in the clean data. There's the concatenate action. And I used to use the concatenate formula as I was taught originally in my job. And it's funny, I was in the library. Actually not the library, it was a Barnes & Noble bookstore. And I went to the Excel section, opened up the Excel cell book and the first page I came to showed me how to concatenate with the ampersand. So I got to back to work and I said, hey guys, did you know you could do this? And it turns out nobody did know that. So I was like a hero. I guess one thing that makes this one a little unique is that we have order ID and date that we do not want to highlight when we go to our unpivot. So leave those alone, highlight everything else. So this is what I was talking about with the totals. So I'm just gonna do my text to columns and then delete off the totals later and then do my comparison. And guys, I worked for 20 years in a job where the quality team was just absolutely ruthless. So I was failing QC about three times a day and I was waiting for my manager to tap me on the shoulder to say, hey, this job just isn't for you. So, you know, people just said, well, just double check your work. Well, with my attention span, I can't do that. So instead, I just opted to do it twice and do this comparison check. And that's how I've been doing adjustments ever since. Uh, just to make sure I get them right. And if I don't get them right the first time, I'll even do them a third time and do a check that way. So that's just how I like to do things. And just remember, if you do this type of comparison, you have to make your table a range. So essentially, you're highlighting your table, doing a right-click button, going to table, and then convert to range. Otherwise, the comparison, it gets a little frustrating. So if you've stumbled upon this video just out of the blue and aren't familiar with my other work, Mainly, I'm a hotkey or keyboard shortcut Excel channel, so I made this Excel obstacle course you might want to check out if you look at my first video, just to kind of get started with the keyboard shortcuts that I'm using if you're lost. But there are only so many keyboard shortcuts, so I'm branching out to do formulas, other things, Power Query, like in this video, and if you all want to see something different, just please comment. I'm open to doing other things, branching out. Even though I'm called Excel Obstacle Course, I love Excel and love to do different things with it, so I'm open. And now we're on to Badly Structured Sales number four. Not much different going on, not much different in the ways of solving it. And maybe I'm just a boring guy, but I've actually had fun making this video and actually going through the exercises because you know, once you get in the groove of doing something and you see how fast you can get at doing it, that's just really my thing. So kind of the basis of this channel too. 
And really what I hope to do is make kind of a community so we can all help each other. You know, if you see something on my video that I can do better, just put a comment. I'm fine with that. You know, just like the guy on TikTok said, Control Shift L is better than Alt D F F. I couldn't agree more. And I'm glad that he commented that. And I, I'll take any comment like that where I can improve. So keep it coming. And actually, if you notice here to the right, I did make an error in my earlier import of this data. So I just redid it. I deleted the table that had the error on it, and I just started from scratch. And I believe that to be one of the best ways to correct yourself, to troubleshoot, is just to start from scratch. And because I'm efficient at doing it, I don't mind doing that. So another benefit to being efficient at Excel. And of course, you know, I'm not going to judge you if you use the mouse to go through all these obstacles. I will say that a lot of times I work from a laptop. And when I was sent to India for work to train some folks, I actually could only work from laptop. I didn't have a desktop connection. So I got really good at the hotkeys and just working solely from the keyboard during that time. And I never really went back. So again, that's why I emphasize using the keyboard and why I use the hotkeys to even go to Power Query. So just enjoy watching me do that and hope you guys tune in for the next video. Please like and subscribe, share this with folks. I definitely am enjoying doing this, enjoying all the new subscribers, comments, everything. If you do make a comment, uh, I might make a video on it. I definitely like to answer questions that way. I think it's more interesting than just trying to verbalize it and definitely easier. So no problem at all. If you see something that you don't understand, you might see on my channel there are a couple of comment response videos, and that's what that's about. So I want to thank you all for watching this video. Until next time.